This here is a RIV file embedded on a web page, and notice how the borders and the buttons are responsive, but only certain areas of them are. Some are fixed, like in the corners, and other areas stretch. Now, this is a technique that game developers have used for a long time called nine slicing or end slicing. And Rive just released this feature that we can all use today for web UIs. So this new ability is going to reshape how we approach UI and graphic design while working within Rive. And the best part is it's super simple to figure out. Here, you can see me designing the border demo I just showed you, and you have to think in terms of what will be fixed and unstretched versus the areas that will stretch indefinitely. So in this example, I'm using Adobe Illustrator to create a vector-based end slicing asset. So yes, you can actually create one that is also rastered or bitmap as well, which I'll show you in a second. Once you have the vector asset ready, you can just copy it and paste it into Rive. And once it's in there, you just hit convert to end slice. Now from there, you'll have nine different squares. And this one is already set up perfectly for the asset. I don't even have to make adjustments. Now notice how it works right out of the gate and stretches exactly as how I imagined. Now you can then wrap it in a layout to make it truly responsive for the browser or other devices. Here's another example with a rastered PNG based button design in Photoshop. This end slicing technique allows you to build more creatively styled assets, so it makes the process of designing things much more fun when you have greater freedom to be creative. Now that my asset's ready, I can flatten it and export a transparent 24-bit PNG. Then, once you import it, and this time under deform, you convert it to an end slice. So the process is the same as in the vector version, though you do have access to what are called tiles only for rastered based end slices like this one. Tiles allow you to make certain areas stretch or repeat the contents within them. You can then wrap it in a layout and then add text to center it. Now there's a lot more you can do with end slices. You can even animate them and do all sorts of cool stuff that I'll touch on later. But for now, Here's what this looks like when you export the RIV file and integrate it on a web page. And just for fun, I also included a Unicorn Studio background. So this has unlocked a whole new superpower for UI designers and front-end devs alike. So I'm super excited to see how this feature is utilized, especially on the web. If you're interested in learning about Rive, I'm going to be releasing a lot more tutorials on this channel, and I'm also going to be releasing a course here in 2025, specifically Rive for web UIs. I'll see you then. Goodbye.